بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear viewers, welcome to another episode of our program Touching Minds. And inshallah, our topic for today is paying attention towards the disadvantage, the most disadvantage of our communities. For which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed in the Quran revealed a surah called Surah Abasa, which is about a vulnerable blind man called Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who came to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our Prophet, well, he was very busy giving da'wah to other elites of Mecca. But without delay, insha'Allah, first of all, we will be listening to the recitation of Surah Abasa from our guests today who are both students at the Myland Muslim Center. On my right is Wali Rahman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam. Welcome to the program. And on my left is Yasin Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And inshallah, like I said, we will be listening to the entire surah of Surah Abasa from our young guest here, Wali Rahman. If you Enlighten us with the recitation, please. A'uzu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Abasa wa tawalla Aja'ahu al-a'ma Wa ma yudrika la'allahu yazzakka Aw yazzakka فَأَهُ الذِّكْرَى أَمَّا مَنْ اسْتَغْنَى فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا يَزَّكَّى وَأَمَّا مَا جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى وَهُوَ يَخْشَى فَأَنْتَ عَنْهُ تَلَهَى كلا إنها تذكرة فما شاء ذكرة في سوف مكرمة مرفوعة متهرة بأيدي سفرة كرام برر قتل الإنسان ما أكفرة من أي شيء خلقه من نطفة خلقه فقدر ثم السبيل يصر ثم أماته فأقبر ثم إذا شاء أشر كلا لما يقد ما أمر فليذر الإنسان إلى تعامه أنا صببنا الماء صبا ثم شققنا الأرض شقا فأنبتنا فيها حبا وعنبا وقطبا وزيتونا ونخلا وحدائق غلبا وفاكهة وأبا متاع لكم ولينأمكم فإذا جاءت الصاخة يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه لكل امرئ منهم يومئذ شأن يغني وجوه يومئذ مسفرة ضاهكة مستبشرة ووجوه يومئذ عليها غبرة ترهقها قترة 
أولئك هم الكفرة الفجرة صدق الله العظيم صدق الله ما شاء الله ولي الرحمن that was indeed a beautiful trans the beautiful recitation of Surah Abasa Allah Akbar may Allah Taala reward you and may He give you more tawfiq and ability to recite even better and insha Allah make you amongst the Siddiqin and Qari and those who are the Ahlullah wa Ahlul Quran Amin ya Rabbal Alamin and insha Allah Yasin Ahmed after this Surah to Abasa we are very eager to learn about some of the commentary and translation and the meanings of that Surah in the Meccan light what can you tell us about this Meccan Surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed teaching us a lesson here through yeah. this dealing of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with the vulnerable blind Sahabi Ibn Maktoum radiallahu ta'ala anhu so um, I'll be reciting the translation of Surah Abasa Bismillah Abasa wa tawalla He frowned and turned his back Anja'ahu al-a'ma Because a blind man came to him Wa ma yudrika la'allahu yazzaka Should the reminder be Should the, should the reminder be a reminder for so he can take lessons from it. Yeah, should a reminder be a reminder? And is it a Meccan period? Yeah. And yeah. what is the background of the surah? Please, if you could tell us a bit more about the background. Like, it's all about saying, like, what happened during that time mm -hmm. when um, when that blind Sahabi came. Mm -hmm. And, like, the, the that, that time there was a, a, a few, like, disbelievers mm -hmm. so he came in and after that like the prophet he got he I don't know what happened to him mm -hmm. but he was he felt like um, he, he, he looked like as if he was a bit shocked mm -hmm. by what happened mm -hmm. so um, after that period mm -hmm. like that's most I've known mm -hmm. so so or so that zikr that nasiha or that would benefit him yeah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us amma man istaghna if you want to continue the translation from awiya zakar so after that benefits him yeah that nasiha would in the presence because he was frowned yeah and he actually uh, didn't pay attention to Ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Yeah. So Ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, is a Sahabi and he is very vulnerable. He doesn't realize when he's, the Prophet sallallahu is giving it the da'wah to the elites of Makkah and in such a situation. And uh, so that is why Prophet sallallahu pays less attention to him and he is very much eager so he can give them da'wah, the elites of Makkah, the high-style high people who are the leaders of the communities. So if you were to give us a bit of the commentary, inshallah, about... Okay. As the sentences that follow indicate, he who frowned and turned away was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself. As for the blind man, this was Ibn Umm Maktum, the cousin of the Prophet of Khadija. Ibn Umm Maktum came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at a time while he was deeply engrossed in conveying Islam's message to the most influential people in Mecca, the, the heads of the different clans. Ibn Umm Maktum wanted to ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a few que questions, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was irked by this intrusion. The words, no indeed, I hear indicative of God's directive to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not to show undue deferences to those heedless of him on account of worldly eminence. For Islam should not be presented as though the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were abjectly begging those who spurned it now honour him by accepting it. It did not become to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to invite such arrogant people to Islam as it would rise the misconception that accepting Islam was for the Prophet's own interest. Nor was it appropriate that they be made to feel important if they accepted Islam. It would prosper as a result. And if they did not, Islam would court disaster. Islam cares as little for them as they care for it. 
So basically from that commentary what you're trying to say that Islam has actually not in need of superiors, sub, sub, some leaders, that they, they have to come to Islam to honor Islam. But we need Islam, we need Allah, Allah does not need us. This is the teaching. And for that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns our Prophet وسلم, that don't be neglectful. Don't show your any kind of an attention. Show, but show attention to those who are loyal to Islam, those who are vulnerable. Don't think that the people, the leaders will do a great job. No, if the sincerity is the main thing, the quality, which is lies beneath in the hearts of these believers, these are poor, vulnerable people. They will, subhanallah, take, make great contributions to Islam. And these are the people who Allah himself he values people like Abdullah ibn Maktoum radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ أَوْ يَذَّكَّرُ فَتَنْفَعَهُ الزِّكْرَ أَمَّا مَنِ اسْتَغْنَى فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا يَزَّكَّ If you want to continue from وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا يَزَّكَّ you know when he yeah. does not take the nasiha, what happens? Um, what happens? He is, is fearful. Yeah, like he 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 want, he wishes like something should be safe with him. And wh according to what he said mm. about um and you said about um Allah doesn't need us um as as people say um, Islam is our, about peace. Mm. Um, we don't need like any fights, no nothing. Mm. We just need peace, mm -hmm. and so that means. Um, whatever it takes, we shouldn't like do anything bad that can like um, that can make Islam mm. like a bad uh, like a bad view for other people. Yeah. So um, as he said about the prophet, um, the prophet, as they say, he's like the one of the most one of the most smartest, mm -hmm. and so people should learn. Mm. People should actually like <coughs> acknowledge what he's actually been teaching us. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why we, if we d we're the ones that need Allah because he's the one that can support us. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that need help. We're the ones that need knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that means we're people that actually want to give like, um, like want forgiveness and all that. They mm. should really like go into like mm. all this forgiveness and all that. We don't need any fights. Mm. We don't need any like bad people mm -hmm. we just want to be good and very faithful mm -hmm. you know in our religion mashallah so that is your understanding from the surah yeah. of surah abasa that we have <coughs> we need this unity yeah we don't need infighting mm -hmm. we don't need this quarreling we don't need to favor others yeah. upon others no one is disadvantaged everyone's advantage yeah. everyone is valuable every human being is valuable, valuable in the eyes of allah even though he's vulnerable he might have a, a impairment, a severe impairment. But Allah has given them the value of Iman, yeah. the faith. And that is the most valuable in the eyes of Allah. Yeah. Just like Allah says, the most honorable in the akramakum in the Allah is the one who is the most pious, the most closest to Allah, the most honorable yeah. in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is a very important point. I mean, this is the lesson being taught to sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that don't think that the big people, the rich people, the famous leaders, they will do the best. They will bring Islam and your da'wah to and complete the mission. No, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use these poor people, vulnerable people, who he values because they are sincere believers. And they, Allah can accept and give progress to this deen through them. Allah doesn't need any powerful and rich people. So in the light of the commentary, <coughs> Waliyu Rahman, what more can you tell me about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed explained to us about this whole situation? <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to teach the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to like favor those who are 
much much more powerful and wealthier because accepting Islam is not like Allah does not need them we, we follow Islam because we need Allah so ex like having big famous people in Islam does not matter Subhanallah. so big famous people wouldn't do any good yeah. Allah can take the work of his deen from anybody yeah example like someone can be a layman someone can be a poor person with no status in society yeah. but if Allah wants to take so do you remember that famous hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says Allah does not look at your appearances in Allah la yanzuru ila ajsamikum walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum he looks at your hearts your sincerity your actions what you produce what you do he does not look at your bodies or your appearances how you look but he looks at what's in your heart that's all what matters so you know when you mentioned that commentary about this surah in the second par paragraph you mentioned something <coughs> about the elites of Makkah and the situation exactly described in that surah so, for Islam should not be presented as though the Prophet وسلم, were objectively begging those who spurned it now honor him by accepting it so Islam shouldn't be like a beggar's belief. We don't beg people to become Muslims. We don't convert people that you have to become Muslims. We attract, we rather attract people with the beauty of Islam to come to Islam, isn't it? Yeah. That this is the beauty of Islam. And Islam is such a beautiful lifestyle, a religion, complete code of life. So it's not about converting or begging someone to become Muslim. Allah doesn't need that. What Allah needs is the sincerity, the acceptance, the beauty, the love, the unity, which he looks at, which lies deep in our hearts. If you want to continue. <coughs> it did not become the Prophet wasallam to invite such arrogant people to Islam as it would raise the misconception that accepting Islam was for, was for the Prophet's own interests. So if our Prophet wasallam gives so much da'wah, he calls these people the leaders of the communities that please come to Islam and he's only worried about them. Then that situation might bring about this question that people might think he probably has, the Prophet probably has some personal interests. So why is he just actually giving da'wah and more worried about the rich people and the elite, those who are famous? and celebrities and why not the poor people who are already sincere believers and are supporting him so don't take your eyes do not move your eyes away from them what do you want Allah's pleasure or this worldly life the pleasure of this world Allah actually warns in Surah Kaf he tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is so important that who we sit with if these are very ordinary people, they may be ordinary people, but if their heart is full of Iman, if our friends, if they are of good manners, and if they sincerely have morals and they believe in Allah, and they, are seri they take the religion seriously as well, they have principles, then that will take you a long way in life. But those friends who are just after Rich. fame, money, yeah. and they, they're after celebrities, Copying. So who do we want to make our role models? I think it should be the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he has been teaching us very good things such as um, our Iman, all that stuff. Because um, as they say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadu Rasulullah. So then that means um, even the poor people, even just because they're poor, it doesn't mean they have no Iman, no wealth, no nothing. Uh, Allah knows that they, if they've done good in their life, inshallah, and, uh, and that they will straight, go straight to Jannah even without any sins. So that means even poor people don't even need um, to be wealthy to, to go Jannah. They don't need, uh, even if they're rich, then they, 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 could, they can be very 
like they can be very good by doing like charity like a lot of money they should like give a, like invest in a lot of islamic projects they should do that because um even they because like people they will they want like more like the people want other people to join islam mm. because we want to spread peace across the world subhanallah and this means that even if we ha anything that is bad we can change it yes. in one go yeah so yeah we should actually try and help people get into islam make their faith grow attract the people yeah. with their good manners if we're not honest if we're not good muslims if we don't uh, have our own principles and morals how could i tell someone that this is a good way of life if i'm actually action acting on the contrary if i if my message does contradict myself my life if i say something and do something else subhanallah al-azim it was a beautiful uh, discussion indeed and the subject is although it's very vast and very deep but alhamdulillah jazakumullah for coming young guests you made it uh, such a inspiration that we've talked about although in very short span of time about the ways of sallallahu alaihi wasallam how he taught us to actually treat our vulnerable the most disadvantaged those who are impaired those who are helpless those who are voiceless but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who helps us when we help that servant of allah who is in a difficult situation wallahu fi awni al abd ma kana al abd fi awni akhi allah will definitely help us as long as we help our brother who is in need or our sister who is in need and one more lesson finally before we end the show we've learned that our role model is who our Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may peace be upon him. Laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana. Indeed for you, in the Rasul of Allah, in the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the best of examples, is the best of, is the best role model. And if we have belief in Allah and the last day of judgment, that we will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day, and indeed we will meet our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam insha'Allah in Jannah, then we should hope for this best and we should aim for it that we subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger we follow him and he's our role model instead of following all these celebrities and going after them and imitating them subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to emulate and imitate and follow the lifestyle of our beloved muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and inshallah until the next episode of our program Make du'as for us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.